2000, I went to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and caught the very end of the American Station Wagon Owners Association meet that year. Unfortunately, I was able to make it only on Sunday when a lot of the members were packing up to leave, so I only caught just a few of the cars that were still there. All right, I'm Ken McDaniel, and uh, I'm the president and founder of the American Station Wagon Owners Association, and it's a club dedicated to the preservation of station wagons. I started the club in 1996, and what I did is I, I just wrote a letter to the editor's section of uh, Hemmings, and I just put an ad seeing if there was any interest in starting a station wagon club, and I had uh, 22 responses. And one, one of the people was here today, uh, Mark Kenny, with the original 22. And so that's how I started it. And we started producing a newsletter, which was kind of crudely done. And now it's, it's like a magazine. And right now there's uh, about 400 members you know, nationwide. So it has grown quite a bit in, in just a few years. Hi, my name is John Slovic. Um, this is my 1973 Chevrolet Caprice Estate station wagon. And it has a 400 cubic inch two barrel V8, uh, pretty much all original. It has three seats. Uh, third seat faces forward and it has a clamshell tailgate. This is how the clamshell works. Uh, it's all electric. This is the estate model so I'm assuming this was an option on it at the time, the electric gate. Hey, my name's Joe Wheat. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and I've had this 53 Pontiac since oh around 1978. Now, I have uh, a number of Pontiacs. I, I like the early 50s cars with the straight eight engines. The six-way seat, which is unusual, uh, it's a mechanical seat, but it basically adjusts just like a power seat. Now, the headliner is wood grain, and uh, that was impossible to find. I actually had to make that, and we actually put every groove in there with a router. Uh, it took quite a bit of time, but it was well worth the effort, I think. My name is Rich Wolf. I'm from Hamilton, New Jersey. I bought this car in 1974 in July for $250. And this is after total restoration. Approximately $10,000 in the car. And last year it took first place in an original restored class in the 1999 convention at the uh, Station Wagon Show in Charlotte, North Carolina. Sure, but I mean, I got all this junk. Oh, that's okay. that was the car's got 77,000 original miles, it's got the original motor, the uh, transmission's been redone, and all the body and uh, paint, chrome, everything's been redone. It runs real good, very good running car. The 332 cubic inch V8, 225 horsepower. Like I said, it is original. And uh, as you can hear, it runs real nice, real quiet. My name is Mark Johnson. Uh, this, is, this is one of two cars that I own. We're at the Station Wagon Club in Pittsburgh. Um, it's, as you can see, it's totally unrestored. Um, it has 204,000 miles on it. The, um, it needs some body work, but it's a reliable car. It has a 2.8 liter V6. Not too much to tell about it. It's a standard issue Pinto. It's actually, it's a Pinto with a Bobcat front, front end, but uh, I just need to do some body work myself. Um, the Opal station wagon is a 1959. It, uh, it has 39, 39,000 original miles. Uh, it, uh, it has a one point, I believe it's a 1.6 liter straight, uh, straight four engine. It's, it also is unrestored. It's been sitting for about 10 years now. So it, uh, it's a nice little car. It's an Opel made in Germany. Um, they didn't sell too many here in the United States. In fact, I've had the car for 10 years and this is the only one, only station wagon I've seen in, uh, in 10 years. But uh, well, one day I plan to restore it. I just 
brought it out to the station wagon show so everybody can look at it. I'm from Virginia Beach, Virginia, and the mileage has 132,000 miles on it. And uh, we have both the cars here. We have a Buick uh, state wagon and it's 57. We've had this for about 11 years and we've been restoring it for, for the 11, total 11 years. 283 engine with a Rochester four barrel. It has its power pack, it produces 220 horsepower. Uh, and it's, uh, we're restoring it to try to restore it to all original interior. It's India ivory and tropical turquoise. It has uh, power steering, power brakes, power window and power seats. And uh, it also has a padded dash. These are all factory installed items. The only thing that's lacking was the air conditioning unit. This item that you have in front of the window here is a traffic viewfinder. Uh, when you were driving down the road, most of the traffic lights were on the above, above view uh, in the street. And this, the traffic light, the prism would pick up the uh, traffic light so you wouldn't have to stick your head out of the window or lean forward. I wish they had those on cars nowadays. You notice uh, the simplicity of the car, and it doesn't have any of the new emission control devices. These are the old glass windshield wipers. Now they're in plastic. Uh, one of the features on this car has a generator. The, the power steering unit is, is on the single shaft in the back of the generator. Very unusual setup. This car is also equipped with electric wipers, where back in the 50s, uh, a lot of the cars had vacuum wipers. And when you stepped on the gas, your windshield wipers came to a complete stop. And another thing about the 57, the intakes were in the eyelid, right up here. This was your heater intake on this side and your fresh air intake on this side. We're still working on it, we're still quite proud of it. We're still working on it and we hope to go back to the, our convention that's gonna be coming up next year for the, the American Station Wagon Owners Association Convention. We hope to be there with the car. Everyone knows what that is. <clears throat> it's not see the USA in your Mopar, it's see the USA in your Chevrolet. And Dinah Shore had that for her theme song when she advertised for Chevrolet back in the uh, 50s and 60s. And uh, I, I do have one of those on all my nomads um, that was um, kind of a, a trademark of mine. I started that back in the uh, early well, late, late 60s when I started doing car shows, the Chevy shows and everything. This car in particular, I bought in California. And uh, when I, after I bought it, uh, put about 3,100 miles on it before we hit my driveway. We went down through um, Arizona, through the coast of California and New Mexico and we stopped at several state parks. Uh, that being, of course, to a automotive guy, meaning uh, salvage yards, where a lot of goodies uh, is still located. So we have a few other collector cars, uh, Chevy being the uh, most priority. Um, so, and we've never missed the station wagon convention. That is definitely a priority. Uh, for us, my son and I, every year. So, and th this car is particularly uh, uh, neat because it has power windows, factory power seats, and tilt wheel, factory cruise control, um, tinted glass, power steering, power brakes, rear seat speaker, but the luggage rack and, and everything uh, came on the car. And I would see if I could locate the original owner which I did, I was successful, and a, a very nice, kind gentleman, and he and his wife often wondered where the car had gone. And I told him that it's uh, alive and living well and still has the California black plates on it. We have a friend out there where we stay with and used his address so that the car is still located, uh, licensed in California, which is kind of a neat thing with us car collectors, it's kind of like fingerprints, and as long as you can retain those, why, it's, uh, it's kind of a neat trip. Uh, <clears throat> weather permitting, why, this is my image uh, in the Batavia area where I live, or the Fox Valley area. When they see this car, they, they know it's me. And my name is Ron Pittman.
<laughs> California. Hmm? California. Plates on her. <laughs> and I'm Kurt Decker, and we both own 72 Town Country Wagons. See, uh, I think I paid maybe $200 for it. Thing, well, it ran. That was about it. Nothing electrical would work. I like it. The reason why I bought it is because it's different. Uh, I was never a station wagon lover until I bought this. And just driving and just having it, I just fell in love with the car. I would never part with it. Hopefully, over time, I'll get the body done and it'll be looking as good as <laughs> my friend's car here. The uh, Town Country was basically the first luxury wagon. Yeah. Uh, before that, Ford, Chevy, I mean, basically a wagon was basically a people mover. They're, they're very different, especially with the Chryslers. It's just, I don't know, it's, I, have, I have GMs, I have Fords. Uh, Chrysler is very unusual. I don't know why. It's something about the features that they offer. Um, this is basically our new, uh, I guess, new... Uh, it was the convention logo for this year. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm Chuck Snyder, and member of the American Station Wagon Owners Association. I have been to all four national meets so far, this being the fourth national convention. The second year we were in Libertyville, Illinois, which is just uh, north of Chicago. Uh, Libertyville, it was uh, 1998, and our logo in Libertyville was Save the Wills, Restore a Station Wagon. Hi, Mark Kennedy, this is my 72, Ford Country Squire. One beside me is a 73, uh, also a Country Squire. Then we have an 85 and an 89. How's that? This is my 72. I've had this car for about, uh, I think, the better part of three weeks now. I saw it on my way home from work, and I just couldn't pass it up. It's in really good shape. I, I don't know much about the Fords, but it's in really good shape. It's a 72 Ford Country Squire. Um, it's a little rough around the edges, but nothing I can't handle. I, I need to get like a, I need little things for it. Like I need to get the trim redone, maybe a new paint job get the uh, door handle replaced, but I've always loved the wagons. I'm 26 years old and people I work with think I'm crazy for liking wagons, but I love them. Can't get enough of them. Hi, my name's uh, Chuck Snyder and I've always been into unique vehicles. Uh, a few years ago here in 96, I come across this and it was parked in the back row of a car dealership. And apparently an elderly gentleman had given it to his granddaughter for her first vehicle. And you know, kids these days, the first thing she did was take it in and trade it in. I have done nothing to the car myself. Everything is original. Uh, it's got a few spots on it, uh, you know, things, but I drive the car every day during the summer. It's got, as I stated, all, all original parts, uh, and I plan to keep it that way. Just hit 80,000 miles, which isn't bad for a 73 at all. And it's still mechanically, it's, it's running just like a top. The tailgate that with the uh, forts, the forts, uh, they, they either laid down, and it's very nice if, if you didn't want to need to load something a little bit bigger, you know, you could always uh, have the access here. Uh, some of the cars came optional with eight passenger. I just have storage in the back. Mine was just a standard six passenger. I have uh, several other old cars, and I've learned that uh, that's the place to look, is in the back row of the used cars. They, they put these guys back there because uh, they, they just don't sell well enough. Your you sell five yeah, bucks, yeah, yes. Are you? Your yeah, box. Awesome. Anybody who owns a country store would die to have that. What was, was it was in the original Ford that box. Is oh, wow. Oh, wow. That is incredible. Frida, wow. I bow to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, garage sales are paid off. Jen, original game table. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't sure if they had a drink of warm water in there. Oh. I have looked all oh, over the place. Every junkyard I go to, if even if the wagon, even if the wagon is unsavable, you have to open that back compartment and check for the game table. It's not space <laughs> Maybe there was an extra little hook there. Maybe there's something that I have. I have or two what about when there's the seats are in it? Maybe something yeah, with the bracket with the seats. Yeah, I have two sets of seats for this at home that I got. Yeah, Kelly, okay, you too. Okay. Yeah. We'll see you. Have a safe trip home. <laughs>